Welcome to the South Carolina Department of Education's Professional Learning Opportunity, Exploring Phonological Awareness. This virtual self-study has been designed to help you begin or deepen your understanding of phonological awareness. This PLO has been designed as a virtual self-study to be completed by individual educators, grade level teams, or as the content of a school or district professional learning opportunity. A digital agenda is included to help you plan your PLO based on the time available for your professional learning. You may choose to break this PLO into several sessions. Please take into account embedded videos and articles which will require additional time. These items are outlined in the digital agenda for your convenience. Please note that cards need to be printed and cut out for an activity at the end of part one. More information is available on the digital agenda. Before beginning any professional learning opportunity, it is important to remind oneself of the importance of a growth mindset. The standards for professional learning outline several ways that you can take ownership of your learning as you participate in today's PLO. Take a moment to read the prerequisites for professional learning listed on this slide. During this PLO, participants will be exposed to research and instructional strategies in the area of phonological awareness. No picture can be complete without student data, so the outcome of this self-study will depend greatly on the needs of your students. Let's begin this PLO by reminding ourselves of the profile of the South Carolina graduate. This profile is the vision that all students will graduate ready for college, careers, and citizenship. This vision will be accomplished through a multi-tiered system of support for all students. The South Carolina Department of Education, districts, and schools will work together to implement the South Carolina MTSS framework to utilize the most effective teaching and learning strategies that address the academic and social emotional needs of every child. As educators, we have to ensure that all students have numerous opportunities to become aware of the sounds of language, how they are used, and how to use them in enjoyable ways during reading, writing, and oral language activities. Educators need to possess a deep understanding of phonological awareness because phonological awareness is critical for learning to read in any alphabetic writing system. Research shows that difficulty with phoneme awareness and other phonological skills is a predictor of poor reading and spelling development. Multi-tiered systems of support is a framework designed to intensify instruction for students. While all students deserve quality tier one instruction, some students will need additional layers of support. Universal screeners and other diagnostic assessments will help educators narrow the focus by uncovering critical areas that need special attention. This PLO will offer evidence-based practices and approaches to meet the varying needs of students. In compliance with Act 213, the State Level Learning Disorders Task Force developed a list of approved universal screeners. The selected universal screeners contain the core components seen on this slide and located on page 23 of the M South Carolina MTSS Framework and Guidance document. As you can see, phonological awareness appears in kindergarten and first grade. Phonological awareness areas assessed by universal screeners include word awareness, rhyming and alliteration, syllables, and phonemic awareness. Our learning today will be divided into two sections. Part one will review key terms related to phonological awareness and offer insights on why phonological awareness should be taught intentionally. Part two will focus on instruction in phonological awareness. Part two is also infused with research supporting the need for intentionally teaching phonological awareness. At the conclusion of today's PLO, participants should be able to define key terms related to phonological awareness, articulate why phonological awareness should be taught intentionally, and synthesize multiple resources to determine evidence-based methods for effectively teaching phonological awareness. 
recognizing the intricate sounds of language begins at a very early age. In this TED Talk video, Dr. Patricia Cole, Professor of Speech and Hearing Sciences at the University of Washington, describes language acquisition through the lens of brain's re brain research. Pause this video and watch the TED Talk now. The video link can be found on your digital agenda. When you're finished, return to the PLO video to continue our study of phonological awareness. Now we will begin part one of the PLO, which focuses on understanding the purpose of and terminology related to phonological awareness. When young children first develop oral language, they use language to communicate and accomplish many goals that are important to them. Usually, however, they are not consciously aware of language as an abstract object that can be manipulated by them and others, taken apart and put back together in different ways, and analyzed. Test your knowledge of phonological awareness by completing this quick warm-up activity. Carefully read each word in the first table and write the number of phonemes that you hear. Then carefully read each word in the second table and write the number of syllables that you hear. You will be able to check your answers when we move to the next slide. Take a moment to compare Louisa Motes's answers with your own. How did you do? Notice that two words have two possible answers. Pronunciation of these words may vary and that would impact the number of phonemes and syllables heard. Phonological awareness is the recognition that oral language can be divided into smaller components, such as sentences into words, words into syllables, and ultimately into individual sounds. This recognition includes identifying and manipulating onsets and rhymes, as well as having an awareness of alliteration, rhyming, syllabication, and intonation. Being phonologically aware means hearing the differences between bat and pat, and between bat and bet, Developing a child's phonological awareness is an important part of developing a reader. Many research studies indicate that kids who have weak phonological awareness also have weak reading skills. Phonological awareness is an umbrella term that includes both awareness of words at the phoneme level and awareness of larger word units, such as syllables and onset and rhyme. Start with the largest unit and progress to smaller units. It is not essential to master one skill before moving on. The goal is to create an overall awareness of how words work. Now let's take a closer look at the terminology associated with phonological awareness. Rhymes are words that sound similar to one another when you say or hear them. Sometimes rhyming words have the same rhyme, as in cat, hat, bat, and sometimes they do not as in sleigh, day, hay. Alliteration is the identification and production of words that begin with the same initial sound. As children are exposed to words and sounds in words, they learn to focus on the beginnings of words, sound detection, and categorize words by their initial sound, sound categorization. Because alliteration requires sensitivity to word parts that are smaller than a syllable at the sound level, this is a beginning phonemic awareness skill. Word awareness is an awareness of individual words within a sentence. This may seem like a simple task, but fluent oral language is a continuous stream of sound. To the untrained ear, it can be difficult to hear individual words in a sentence that is spoken naturally. A syllable is a part of a word that contains sounds of a word. Most syllables have a vowel. Some words, such as rhythm, have syllables without vowels. While this is rare, it does occur.
An onset is all of the sounds in a word that come before the first vowel. Not all words have onsets. For example, at and in. A rhyme is the first vowel in a word and all of the sounds that follow. It is important to note that teachers often use the term word family or phonogram for the more technical term rhyme. Phonemic awareness is the ability to manipulate and detect the smallest sounds in words. These individual sounds are called phonemes. Phonemic awareness includes the ability to isolate a phoneme from the rest of the word, to segment words into their component phonemes, and to delete a specific phoneme from a word. When describing phonemes, one shouldn't simply say phonemes are sounds. Rather, one should say phonemes are speech sounds. They are not letter sounds because some phonemes, such as ch, are represented by multiple letters. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in speech that distinguishes one word from another. According to the book, How the Brain Works, neuroscience suggests that children need to possess phonemic awareness before tackling the printed word. Acquiring phonemic awareness is often difficult for children because phonemes are co-articulated. That means that when spoken, they are fused with other phonemes in syllabic units and not always easy to decipher. It is important to note that there are 44 phonemes in the English language. Their actual sounds in the language vary because dialect, articulation, speech style, and other factors vary. Nevertheless, these differences are slight. Speakers of English can understand one another even if they have different regional accents. Here's an interesting piece of information from the book, How the Brain Works. Different languages have different numbers of phonemes. It can be as few as 15 in some languages to well over 40 in English. The total number of phonemes in all the world's languages is around 90 which represents the maximum number of sounds that the human voice apparatus can create. With that in mind, pay special attention to the phonological development of second language learners in your classroom. Some phonemes may not be present in the English language learner's native language, and therefore may be difficult for the student to pronounce and distinguish auditorily, as well as to place into a meaningful context. For English language learners, as with all students, it is important that instruction has meaning so that the words and the sounds that students are manipulating are familiar. It's therefore necessary for English language learners to have knowledge of the English vocabulary words with which they are to understand phonemes. Teachers can teach phonemic awareness while also explicitly teaching vocabulary words, their meaning, and their pronunci pronunciations to English language learners. In the following activity, you will review and discuss key terms of phonological awareness. To complete this activity, everyone will need a set of the phonological awareness terms and definitions cards. These cards, found on pages 45 through 48 of the Literacy Beginning Study Guide, should have been prepared in advance. Once groups have their cards, follow the directions on this slide to complete the Sounds of Language activity. Pause the video here as you complete this activity. Now we will move to part two of the PLO, which focuses on teaching phonological awareness. If you wish to divide this PLO into multiple sessions, this would be a good stopping point for today. If not, you may want to take a quick break before starting part two. Part two will describe suggested pacing, teaching methods, and examples of instruction for phonological awareness. Eric Jensen states that based on brain research, teachers should teach in small chunks, process the learning, and then rest the brain. 
Too much content taught in too small of a time span means the brain cannot process it, so children simply don't learn it. As a reminder, here are the guidelines sent out by the State Department in an April 2020 memo regarding instructional time when learning, when learning remotely. The suggested instructional periods include time needed for processing, practice, reading, research, and any other actions that may support the learning process. The guide includes suggested minimum and maximum minutes for instructional time and recommended lengths of sustained attention. Here you will find recommended daily instructional minutes for phonological awareness. It is recommended that kindergarten and first grade teachers teach phonological awareness 15 to 20 minutes a day to the entire class and an additional 15 to 20 minutes to those students experiencing difficulty. Second grade teachers should teach phonological awareness to the whole class for five to 10 minutes and to small groups or those individuals who are struggling readers for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. Phonological awareness lays the foundation for reading. Goal 11 in the language development and communication domain of the South Carolina Early Learning Standards specifically addresses how children develop phonological awareness from infancy through preschool. In the South Carolina College Career Ready Standards, Standard 2 in the Reading Literary Text and Standard 2 in Reading Informational Text address the sounds of language. While the term phonological awareness isn't used in this document, the elements of phonological awareness are described here. Research shows that approximately 20% of students lack phonemic awareness. It is important to consider the foundation of phonological awareness that begins developing in babies. Consider the South Carolina Early Learning Standards that outline developmental milestones across a continuum. Do all children have caregivers that are imitating sounds with them as babies and playing rhyming games with them as toddlers? These are interactive activities. This cannot be accomplished by watching an educational television show. Do most children have these opportunities in your community? Has the foundation been started? As educators, we must determine where children are so we can fill in the gaps as early as possible. Without early preventative measures, many of these students will fall behind their peers in reading or be diagnosed with a learning disability. While not all children with limited phonological awareness knowledge experience difficulties learning to read, researchers note that most children with poor phonological awareness will struggle to decode an alphabetic script. Therefore, teacher proficiency and phonological awareness assessment is an important factor for ensuring that children at risk are promptly identified and supported. One way to identify students who are struggling with phonological awareness is to administer your school's approved universal screener. Phonological awareness areas assessed by state approved universal screeners include word awareness, rhyming and alliteration, syllables, and phonemic awareness. Universal screeners will give a snapshot of students' phonological awareness capabilities and help identify outliers. You may choose to follow up with a diagnostic assessment to get more specific information. One example of a diagnostic assessment is Yvette Zonk's phonological awareness skills test. It is important to use data in order to pace your phonological awareness instruction and determine which skills need to be taught as a whole group, in a small group, or individually. Instruction should be based on the needs of your students. Phonological skills develop in a predictable progression. This concept is important as it provides the basis for sequencing teaching tasks from easy to more difficult. The table seen in the next two slides is a synthesis of several research reviews and summaries. This ties specific ages to the typical accomplishments of phonological awareness tasks. The first slide shows ages four through five and a half, while the second slide shows ages six through nine. 
take a moment to examine the typical skills and associated tasks for children ages four through five and a half. Notice that it's not a lockstep skill sequence. You don't teach rhyme and then move to word awareness and then move to onset and rhyme, etc. Rhyming skills are taught in the progression from simple to complex, but spiraled in among other phonological awareness skills. Here you can see how the skills continue to build for ages six through nine. Again, the sequence here is a synthesis of several research studies. This information can give general guidance, but the best way to determine the pacing of phonological awareness instruction is to determine where your students are. From that starting point, you will progress through the skills moving from simple to complex within each area as needed. Growth of phonological awareness is best represented as a continuum. It is not a sequ sequential stage model in which children must demonstrate full mastery of a skill at one level before beginning to develop skills in the next level. Rather, children's skills in multiple levels of the continuum may develop at the same time. As you examine various resources, you will find that the skills involving rhyme and alliteration are sometimes placed prior to word awareness and sometimes placed within the onset rhyme component. Since the skills within each element are taught in a progression of increasing complexity, it's not an issue. While the placement of rhyme and alliteration instruction varies among experts, all agree that phonological awareness instruction should progress from simple to complex. This chart offers a nice visual to help teachers see how multiple skills can be taught in tandem. Please pause the PLO recording and take a moment to watch the YouTube video entitled, What is Phonological Awareness? In this four minute video, Margie Gillis, the president of Literacy How, shares a detailed overview of phonological awareness instruction, including tips to help improve phonological awareness in children. A link for this video can be found on your digital handout. Play helps children grow emotionally. It is a joyful experience and provides an outlet for anxiety and stress. One way preschoolers and kindergartners get ready to read is by noticing and playing with words, rhymes, and syllables that they hear in everyday speech. The more you can build on these early pre-reading skills, the more prepared children will be for the challenge of learning to read. Guessing games such as I Spy can be used to work on almost any phonological skill. In the upcoming slides, we will explore games and ideas for teaching each component of phonological awareness. In part one of this PLO, we familiarize ourselves with the definitions for each component of phonological awareness. We will now look closely at each component of phonological awareness and explore examples of instruction in each area. Each area will feature one demonstrated example and additional embedded links to videos or articles. You may choose to pause the video in each area and explore the links, or you may choose to explore them at a later time. Let's begin by examining rhyme and alliteration. Many parents and teachers read rhyming books to children, but do they help children recognize rhyme? Do they move beyond recognizing rhyme to completing and producing rhyme? Be careful not to assume that just because children enjoy rhymes that they understand how they work. Games are a great way to teach or reinforce rhyming skills. In this example, the game concentration is used to help children identify rhyming words. In this game, a child will turn over any two cards, say the name of each picture, and decide if the words rhyme. If they rhyme, they'll leave the two cards face up. If they don't, they'll turn them back over and try again. The game continues until all cards have been matched.
Here are three additional ideas for teaching rhyme and alliteration. The first is a video of a teacher leading a small group of students in a pre-AA guided reading group focused on rhyme. The link for this video can be found on your digital agenda. The second bullet includes an article that will help you develop questions to guide children in understanding rhyme or alliteration as you read books spotlighting that text feature. The third bullet includes a blog with ideas for kinesthetic games to identify rhyme. Let's explore the connection between concept of word, which is a print feature, and word awareness, which can occur orally. Concept of word is quite simply the understanding that a word is a group of letters surrounded by white space on either side. This skill must be present, preceded by a conceptual understanding of what a word actually is. Children must become aware that individual words occur in spoken language. By segmenting a spoken sentence into individual words, students demonstrate word awareness. It is best to begin this instruction with sentences composed of single syllable words. Let's try out a word awareness activity. When completing this activity with children, they would not see the words in the speech bubble. They would hear the words spoken and push up a red marker for each word. The directions are, listen to the sentence, count each word in the sentence, repeat the sentence using a marker to map each word in the sentence. I like to kick. I like to kick. Be sure to point to the four red markers moving from right to left to repeat the sentence, I like to kick. This will reinforce one-to-one -one correspondence. Here you'll find additional instructional examples related to word awareness. Two are videos of teachers working with children and the other is a link to a website with hands-on options for teaching word awareness using chips and a silly sentence train. Resources are readily available for teaching syllables and many teachers do this well. In the next few slides, you will see examples of syllable instruction in action. One way to locate syllables is by touching your chin as you say a word. You can count the number of times your chin drops to identify the number of syllables in the word. In this activity, students are asked to sort items by the number of syllables. This could be done with real objects or with pictures. If students place items in what you perceive to be the wrong bucket, ask them to verbalize the words again for you. Perhaps they're calling a cat a kitten. Cat has one syllable and kitten has two, so that would explain the discrepancy. Let's take a look at this activity. Clap the syllables in these words and place the item in the correct bucket. Cat. Apple. Pencil. Cow. Table. Here you'll find additional instructional examples related to syllable awareness. Two are videos of teachers working with children and the other describes the activity from the last slide. Onset and rhyme instruction can be broken into two major categories blending, and segmentation. These skills lay the foundation for print-based skills, such as encoding and decoding, as students move into writing and reading printed words. This onset rhyme activity is called a rhyme house or a word house. It looks similar to word family houses found in many first grade classrooms, but this house uses pictures rather than print. Let's complete this activity together to see how a class could decide if items belong in the word family for house. Excuse me, in the word family house. Name each picture. If it is in the same word family as bat, place it in the house. Car. Cat. Rat. 
frog, bat, hat. Here you'll find additional instructional examples related to onset rhyme awareness. One is a video of a teacher working with a child. One shows an example of a make and take tool to practice onset rhyme. And the last explains the rhyme house activity like that seen on the last slide. Phonemic awareness is a critical component of phonological awareness. Phonemes represent the smallest speech sounds. There are several skills that must be understood at this level. Isolating, blending, segmenting, substituting, deleting, and adding phonemes. These skills should be taught in a progression from the simplest skill, isolating phonemes, to the more complex skills, manipulating through substitution, deletion, and addition of phonemes. According to Wiley Blevins, there are five basic types of phonemic awareness activities, all designed to increase student understanding of how sounds work in words. Activity types two through four are presented in the progression from easy to complex. Activity type one, rhyme and alliteration, begins with having children identify rhyming words and then progress to generating rhyming words. Alliteration involves saying a sentence with words that mostly begin with the same sound, such as six seals sell, sh <laughs> six seals sell sandwiches at the seashore, and have students identify the repeated sound. Activity type two, oddity tasks, focused on finding the word that doesn't belong. This could be done using a list of rhyming words or words with the same beginning, ending, or medial sounds. Activity type three, oral blending, should progress from blending syllables to onset and rhymes to phonemes, moving from simple to complex. Likewise, activity type four, oral segmentation, should progress from segmenting syllables to onset rhyme to phonemes and then moving from simple to complex there as well. Activity type five, phoneme manipulation, moves from phoneme substitution to deletion to addition. These activities start with initial sounds and move to final sounds, medial sounds, syllables, and consonant blends. Concrete representations of sound units, such as chips and blocks, may help make mental manipulation of sounds easier for some children. We will see this in action in the activity on the next slide. Push a chip into the box for each sound that you hear. Cat. There are three sounds in cat. K, a, eh, t. Cat. Pig. There are three sounds in pig. P, I, G. Pig. This activity helps students attend to the individual phonemes by segmenting and then blending the phonemes heard in a word. Here you'll find additional instructional examples related to phonemic awareness. One is a video of a teacher modeling the correct pronunciation of each phoneme in the English language. The next video shows a teacher using puppets to model phonemic awareness instruction. The last link explains the use of Alconan boxes, also called sound boxes, for teaching phonological awareness. This method was seen on the last slide. Now that we've examined the components of phonological awareness and seen instructional examples for each, Let's consider how phonological awareness can be used for slightly older children to bridge gaps and form connections as they move into print work. When students begin learning letter-sound relationships, combining phonemic awareness and phonics can accelerate students' progress. Prior to that, the activities are oral. Research shows that the combination of letter work and phonemic awareness is quite powerful, especially for more sophisticated skills like phoneme substitution, addition, and deletion. Supporting the phonological awareness of, every, of early readers, kindergarten and grade one, is very important. Some older readers may also need support because they either have not understood the concept of sounds used to convey meaning or have not fully grasped the importance of relationships between sounds and letters.
intervention in the area of phonological awareness is typically completed in a relatively short amount of time. It doesn't take a great deal of time to bring many students' phonemic awareness skills up to a level at which phonics instruction begins to make sense. In some studies, as few as 11 to 15 hours of intensive phonemic awareness training spread out over an appropriate time period produce results. Here are a few videos demonstrating phonological awareness as an embedded component of phonics. Blending phonemes and grapheme instruction can help bridge the gap for students identified in need of phonetic intervention. Now it's time to delve deeper into phonological awareness in the topic of your choice. Six articles are available on the next slide. You may choose one of these articles or locate another article or chapter from a professional text to read. The topic should be related to phonological awareness. Once you've selected your text, meet with others who read the same text and use the three levels of protocol, three levels of text protocol, or another protocol agreed on by your group to set a purpose for your reading. Read and discuss the article using the protocol. Before dispersing, consider what this information means in relation to your standards. Take a moment to browse the articles and select one that you would like to read. Once you've chosen your text, find others who have selected the same text. You may want to pause your video to complete this activity. Let's review our learning in today's professional learning opportunity. Part one reviewed key terms related to phonological awareness and offered insight on why phonological awareness should be taught intentionally. Part two focused on instruction in phonological awareness. Part two also included research supporting the need for intentionally teaching phonological awareness. At this time, you should be able to define key terms related to phonological awareness, articulate why phonological awareness should be taught intentionally, and synthesize multiple resources to determine evidence-based methods for effectively teaching phonological awareness. As we conclude this PLO, take a moment to reflect and debrief on today's learning. How did this learning change or extend your thinking? Describe a takeaway that you will apply when you return to your school or district. What questions do you still have about the importance of phonological awareness? Be sure to check out these great resources as you continue on your professional development journey. The University of Florida's website and the National Center for Improving Literacy Toolkit each offer fabulous resources for teachers and families. In addition, the South Carolina Department of Education is offering two related professional development opportunities. Please join us for the on-demand self-study, Effective Phonics Instruction Parts 1 and 2, and the South Carolina Department of Education's virtual book study series, Making Sense of Phonics. Thank you for taking the time to view this module in an effort to continually improve literacy for the students of South Carolina. Please reach out to Dr. Quincy Moore or Marie Gibbons with any comments or questions that you may have. We invite you to also complete the phonics module as you commit to develop, implement, and enhance effective literacy instruction in your district or school. Thank you.